Hey, Astro Kids, and welcome back. This is your horoscope for Mercury and Aries taking place from April 16th through the 30th of 2021. Very impulsive energy that is going to strongly play into this Mars in Gemini transit that we are also going to be going through simultaneously. So let's go ahead and talk about this short and simple transit of Mercury and Aries. So before we get into this Mercury and Aries transit, we want to first break down what Mercury is all about and what the sign of Aries is all about and put these two energies together. So Mercury in astrology is the young prince in the planetary cabinet. Mercury is this very curious planet that is wanting to learn, to explore. This is a planet of youthfulness. This is a planet of intellect, of logic, of reasoning, of diplomacy. So Mercury is very friendly. It is very much about communication, about pulling different ideas. This energy here of Mercury is very much a childlike, free-spirited energy that is always curious, always wanting to learn. This energy is able to juggle different ideas all at once and sort and rearrange different ideas, pull apart different ideas. And of course, on the mature end, as Mercury comes into its exaltation of Virgo, we also see some skills and talents around healing, service, and solving problems. So this is very much a planet of logic and reasoning. Now, Aries is also a very youthful sign as well. This sign of Aries is the first sign in the entire zodiac. So it comes through with this childlike energy, this enthusiasm for life. Aries is very much an aggressive, straightforward energy. It is the energy that charges in first and foremost. It brings that spark of life, that energy, that vitality into existence. Remember that Aries originally belongs to the first house of the natural zodiac, which is the house of self. It is the point from which we make contact with life here on earth. So Aries is the starting point of everything. It is where our perception, our mentality starts from. It is where we experience this physical reality from. And so Aries is also a very intuitive sign. It is connected to the ability to perceive what is happening around you in your reality. This sign of Aries being controlled by Mars is very aggressive, very energetic, very competitive, very enthusiastic. This is a take charge type of energy as it is also a cardinal sign, which is all about initiating the change, initiating the action, stepping into the action. And so this energy of Aries is very much an independent, energetic, aggressive, direct, competitive type of energy. Now, as we combine these two energies of Mercury and Aries, what we will see is that Mercury is neutral in this position of Aries. And so Mercury would rather be in a more logical, practical, down-to-earth type of sign where it's able to work out the details, come up with a diplomatic solution, be reasonable. This is a sign where Mercury is a little bit more impulsive. This Aries energy wanting to take charge, wanting to dominate, wanting to jump into the action. Mercury is in a little bit of a difficult position in this sign of Aries, where the logic, the reasoning is lacking as there isn't enough time to think before you leap. And this is a huge theme of this Mercury and Aries transit is are you just making snap decisions? Are you just saying things, because this is also the planet of communication, are you just saying things without really thinking it through? 
You're just making these aggressive, bold statements without actually panning out all of the details first. So this energy of Mercury and Aries is very much an impulsive energy. And the message that came through as I was sitting with this energy is, who is going to be naughty and get into trouble with this transit? So you want to be careful as we are moving into this energy of Mercury and Aries, as this is very much an energy that can get you into a lot of trouble in terms of your thinking, in terms of your communication, in terms of your decisions. This energy of Aries being very impulsive, very direct, very straightforward. This is an energy where, depending on where this is in your chart, you can jump before thinking it through. This is an energy where you can leap before you look. And so this is a very dangerous energy for those of you who are trying to quickly make things happen in your life. Again, we talked a lot in that Mars and Gemini video about how we have all of this impulsive energy of just jumping and making things happen and all of these different ideas that are floating around and things not being grounded enough, not being enough in the present. This transit of Mercury and Aries is supporting that transit of Mars and Gemini as these are a mutual reception. Mercury would rather be in the sign of Gemini just as Mars would rather be in the sign of Aries. And so this is strengthening this influence even more so where we have all of this energy, all of this impulsiveness, all of these thoughts bouncing around, ready to jump in, ready to take action, ready to move towards a goal. But we have to slow down a little bit and bring ourselves back into the present, ground this energy. There's so much energy going on, especially as this transit of Mercury and Aries will be in a big stellium with the Sun, Venus, and Uranus. This is a huge time where there is so much of this energy, this childlike energy, this burst of energy. And so again, are you thinking things through before just jumping into an action? This energy, very childlike, very spontaneous, very enthusiastic, very aggressive, and so it's important to ground yourself before trying to make a sudden decision. So let's talk about this transit a little bit more and getting into the Noxatras. Now, this transit of Mercury is not being aspected by any other planets and it's not aspecting any other planets either as we come into this transit. And so the most attention that Mercury is getting during this is its depositor of Mars and Gemini, but also the Sun, Venus, and Uranus that will sit in Aries with Mercury as well. Now, this is a very much impulsive and dangerous type of energy. Again, making sure that you're thinking everything through before you just go in and do something. Mercury will be combust to start out this transit, which makes this even more dangerous. Mercury is not functioning properly when it is so close to the sun. And this is going to give this increase in this impulsivity, this desire to make a choice, to make a decision without really thinking it through, without really gathering all of the logic and the details. Now, on the other hand, this combustion of the sun with Mercury can give us some brilliance. So we can have some light bulb over the head moments where we get this flash of inspiration. Again, this energy very much is this aggressive burst of excitement with this Aries activity and this Mars and Gemini. There's so much of this energy that is coming to life throughout this transit. You want to be careful again, though, about trying to jump into something very quickly with Mercury being the planet that is all about our decision making, our choices, our intellect, our logic, our way of reasoning with it in this sign of Aries, which is very fast paced, very aggressive. This doesn't give us much time to think things through. 
This gives this impulsivity of communicating things very fast, making decisions very fast, not taking the full amount of time to think it through. Remember that Aries is a sign that tends to get very bored. It needs activity. It needs stimulation. It is ready for competition. It's ready for battle. It's ready to jump into something. But let's slow down a minute and think this through before just jumping into a unnecessary conflict. This is a huge part of this transit. Again, this message all about who is going to get themselves into trouble during this Mercury and Aries transit. Now, Mercury will also meet up with Venus during this transit. Again, we have this huge stellium going on in the sign of Aries, where we have this burst of energy, this excitement, this adventure, this independence, this daring and aggressive, straightforward, athletic, competitive type of energy of Aries here. Venus is here, and we did a whole video on Venus and Aries. So if you have not checked that out, I will leave a link above and down below in the description, along with that video on Mercury and Aries. I'm sorry, on Mars and Gemini. With this Venus and Aries energy, this is very much about our love of excitement, our love of fun. Again, Venus is uncomfortable here in the sign of Aries. And if you want to know more about how that is all playing out, make sure to check out that video. But as Mercury comes in here with the sun, with Venus, these are personal planets that are based upon our interests, our likes, our central focus. And so there's so much of this focus in what is quick, what's exciting, what we can get right now. And so it's important to slow this down. And especially with Uranus also in the mix, this also gives this spontaneous, sudden burst of energy as Uranus is a very unexpected type of energy. Uranus throws us unexpected events and it is here in Aries where we have this quick burst of energy. And so as it's here with Venus, the sun and Mercury, Again, you want to be very careful about your decisions, your choices that you are doing. You can quickly get yourself into trouble by making a snap choice in this moment. Now, Mercury will go through all of these Noxatras in the sign of Aries, starting out with Ashwini. And Ashwini is the Noxatra that is symbolized by the horse. It is ruled by K2. This is a Noxatra that is full of energy, full of life, full of potential. But this is also an energy that can experience losses as it has its rulership from K2. And it does this by rushing to snap decisions. Again, this is this energy of Aries immediately as we come into this transit of Mercury and Aries that you want to be careful about your decisions and choices. Quickly choosing to cut things off, quickly choosing to avoid things, quickly choosing to run in a different direction, quickly choosing to charge into something can land you into some major trouble. And this Ashwini Naksatra especially is an area where you want to be cautious of, where you can get yourself into situations where you lose, where you fall into a trap or you lose something valuable by trying to quickly sprint, quickly make a decision, right? When we think about the horse, we think about the speed, the energy of a horse running through a field. This energy is fast, it's quick, it's bold, it is energetic. So you want to be careful here of this fast-paced excitement and energy to just jump straight into a choice and decision. This can land you into some major trouble coming into this, especially as the depositor of Aries is in Gemini. So again, we have all of this energy that we need to ground. We need to be present. We need to come back into the moment and slow this down. Now, Mercury will also shift into the Barani Naksatra. This Naksatra is a little bit less of this 
fast paced excitement as this is symbolized by the female organs. This is a very creative Noxatra that is controlled by Venus. And so this is especially a time where you may feel called towards a certain hobby or passion that you have. You have something that you want to work on that you want to create at this time. This can be very good for business. This can be very good for coming up with some great ideas and inventions, especially with all of this fast paced energy. This can be a huge time where you gain some insight, you gain some new thought, some new idea that you can put to, to the test. So this energy of this Barani Noxatra is not so much dangerous as compared to that first Noxatra. Now, when we get to the end of this transit, we're still going to have Mercury in this stellium. Remember that Mercury is a very quick planet. It is charging through this sign of Aries. So this is a very short transit of Mercury and Aries. As it comes to the end of Aries, it will fall in the Kritika Noxatra, which will take us into the sign of Taurus. This Noxatra is symbolized by the knife. This is a very intense Noxatra about precision, about cutting through things, about getting the job done. This is a Noxatra that is controlled by Mars. And so in this transit here, again, you want to be careful because this can take you into a direction where you're trying to get things done that are very specific, that are very divisive that take a lot of skill and craft and you're just trying to rush through this. And so it's very important coming into this last part of this transit here. Are you just rushing into things without seeing all of the details? So we talked about that first Noxatra where it's, are you just making decisions that you will regret later on? And then as we come to this Kritika Noxatra, it's, are you making decisions without thinking all of the details through. And so again, similar to that first part of this transit, this energy becomes very dangerous. It becomes very restless. This is charging into things, making quick decisions without really taking the time to look at all the fine print, without taking the time to rearrange everything, to do things in the proper way. So this desire to win, to be on top, to get to your outcome is strong in this Kritika Noxatra. But you want to be able to slow this down so that you're able to properly think things through instead of charging in and just landing yourself into some unwanted trouble. Let's go ahead and move on into each of the signs and how this will affect you according to your chart coming into this transit of Mercury and Aries. We're going to start off here with the cardinal signs. For those of you with an Aries moon or Aries ascendant, we have Mercury that's going to be with the sun, Venus, and Uranus in your first house. This is extreme. You are going to have a tremendous amount of energy. You're not going to know what to do with yourself coming into this transit. And so this is a very good time for those of you who have hobbies, who have interests, who have things that you want to do to put some of your energy into this, because this is going to help you to bring your energy levels down to a place where you're able to think things through on a rational level. This energy is so much, this is so much energy and intensity where this becomes very difficult to focus, this becomes very difficult to slow down, to be present. This energy is so fast, it's so much full of life as you're coming into this transit here of Mercury and Aries. So you want to be careful for those of you with an Aries moon or Aries ascendant. Mercury does control your sixth house of conflicts. And your third house of communication, you don't want to land yourself into some trouble by saying some things that can hurt others. And so this is a huge thing that comes up for those of you with an Aries moon or Aries ascendant. Is anything that you're doing along the lines of communication, 
along the lines of publishing, writing, anything along these lines, paying very close attention about how you're expressing your thoughts because you can very much be harsh, you can be aggressive, you can be unruly in your communication and this can land you into some potential trouble, especially as your sixth house is being controlled by Mercury. The sun also controlling your fifth house. This is a great time where you will experience a lot of confidence, a lot of charisma. You will be much more expressive, much more outgoing, and you can find yourself impulsively wanting to have fun, wanting to do different activities. Again, this is good. This is going to help you balance out this energy, but you want to be careful because you can land yourself into some difficulties for those of you who are doing activities, doing challenges, doing hobbies, you can land yourself into the hospital. You can land yourself into a situation where you have an injury, where you have a conflict that comes up that can be very damaging. So you want to be careful with this energy as this is so fast. It is not giving you enough time to truly rationalize the situation at hand. This is also a time with Venus in here where your relationships can be greatly affected. Again, you want to be careful about your communication. You can uninvoluntarily end a relationship by being aggressive, by being harsh, right? And this is unintentionally for the most part for a lot of you here who have Aries moon or Aries ascendant as you're just quickly communicating things, quickly getting ideas across. But are you really taking the time to process it all before just jumping out and expressing these thoughts? This can become something that lands you into some major trouble in your relationships. Also with Venus controlling your second house, you want to be careful of impulsive spending. You want to be careful here of doing things on impulse, quickly making decisions, quickly getting things that you don't necessarily need or you won't necessarily want later on. For those of you with the Cancer Moon or Cancer Ascendant, Mercury will transit through your 10th house. This is very promising for your career as you will have lots of ideas, lots of inspiration coming through to drive you towards your goals, especially as Mercury is aspecting over to your fourth house. Mercury also controlling your 12th house and your third house. Lots of ideas and thoughts coming through in terms of your business and career. You want to be careful though, because as Mercury is controlling your 12th house, you can land yourself into a situation where you are losing or having to let go of something that you held value in. And so this is an area where, again, you can land yourself into some unwanted trouble by quickly acting on things, by quickly jumping into things. This energy is moving too fast. And so a lot of you need to come back to a place of being present, a place of being in the moment as this is all aspecting over to your fourth house of inner peace. The sun, which controls your second house, is also going to be here with Mercury. Be careful of impulsive spending. This is an area where you can make snap decisions with that second house activation and lean into things that you necessarily, that you don't necessarily need or will want later on by making these quick impulsive decisions. So you want to be careful here. The sun in your 10th house of career controlling your second house of wealth also is able to bring in a lot of wealth through your leadership skills. Those of you who are stepping up, taking charge, making these decisions, you can increase your profits. But again, you want to be careful of how impulsive these incentives decisions are as they can land you into some difficulties. With Venus here, Venus controlling your fourth house along with your 11th house. This is very auspicious again where you can gain a lot of 
wealth. You can gain a lot of happiness at this time through your efforts, through moving towards your goals of what you want to achieve. But you want to be careful that you are not in this place of what we talked a lot about in the Mars and Gemini video of projecting your goals out in front of you instead of integrating them into this present moment. So for those of you with a Cancer Moon, Cancer Ascendant coming into this Mercury Aries transit, you want to be careful about this looking into the future and missing the present. Remain present, remain grounded, find that inner peace during this transit. For those of you with a Libra Moon or Libra Ascendant, we have Mercury shifting into your seventh house of partnership. This is actually a great transit for you in terms of relationships. You can be very diplomatic during this time using your communication skills in a huge way, especially as this is Mercury, which controls your ninth and 12th house. This is a very beneficial planet for those of you with a Libra moon, Libra ascendant, and this Aries energy be being very much a malefic influence. Mercury's helping you out through this transit with being more diplomatic, being more so peaceful and negotiable in your interactions with others. So this transit isn't so bad for those of you with a Libra moon, Libra ascendant. Venus will also be in there, which is your chart ruler. And so you can find yourself needing to create some balance and harmony in your relationships at this time. Nothing that you can't work out as the Molitricone sign of Venus is your first house. And so this is an area where you will be using those diplomatic skills. You'll be using those skills to make peace with things, to find closure, to come to negotiations. Your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding of people is going to be highly important through this transit. With the sun transiting through your seventh house, you want to be careful of ego issues though. The sun is exalted and is here now in your seventh house of partnership. And so you can find yourself being much more independent, much more closed off, much more wanting to be in control. And you can also attract people who also have these sun qualities throughout this transit where you can find yourself clashing and getting into battles with authority or into power struggles. And so you want to be careful in this area. But ultimately, for those of you with Libra Moon, Libra Ascendant, Mercury and Venus are giving you the tools to straighten out this area in a big way where you can find peace, you can find negotiation, you can find harmony through these potential conflicts that can arise. With Uranus in there, you can unexpectedly find what you need in this area. And with Uranus here, this can go either way where you can find yourself losing people who are no longer of value to you in your life, or you can find that you solve issues that you believe that you weren't able to. So this is giving you some unexpected results, but there's a lot of dis diplomacy, a lot of harm harmony with this Mercury and Venus combination here in your seventh house. For those of you with a Capricorn moon, Capricorn ascendant, this is Mercury moving into your fourth house. You can find yourself getting into some conflicts and difficulties within your home. You can also find yourself, though, wanting to move your location or needing to make adjustments within your home. With this being such a fast-paced energy, this can give you a lot of great inspiration, a lot of ideas, as this is the house of your mind as well. Remember that cancer is the original ruler of the fourth. And so your state of mind can be very much spontaneous, full of energy. You have all of this mental agility where you can come up with different thoughts and ideas that you once weren't able to tap into or connect to. So there's a lot of this energy of being able to pull through some very spontaneous and bold ideas that you can act on, especially as this is aspecting over to your 10th house of career. 
So this can help you tremendously in your achievements, in your status of leveling up, moving towards what it is that you want to achieve. With Venus in this combination, this also can help tremendously in finding some internal peace. Venus is the karka for the fourth house. It brings comfort. It brings peace. It brings luxury. This is an Aries, though, so you want to be careful about impulsively spending things, using up this money, this energy too quickly with this activation of Mercury. Remember that Mercury is controlling your sixth house. And so you can get into some unwanted conflicts and difficulties at this time. You want to be careful about how you are using this energy as this can affect you greatly during this time. This is very dangerous for those of you who are trying to quickly make decisions. But with Mercury also controlling your ninth house, this is a time of using your wisdom, using your higher insight, using the knowledge that you have to come to a reasonable decision. So you want to pay attention to this impulsivity. If you are finding yourself with these quick impulsive thoughts and these quick decisions that you want to make, take the time to read the fine print. Take the time to Listen to the advice of others. This can help you tremendously as the ninth house is the house of mentors and counselors. And so some of you may need some advice from others if you are in this place of impulsively wanting to make a snap decision. This can save you tremendously in this area. With Venus also here in the mix, once again, this gives you that peace, that diplomacy, but be careful here because Venus is controlling your 10th house of career along with your 5th house of projects. This ambition, this impulsiveness to go after things can lead you into some trouble. On the other hand, this can lead you into a place where you're achieving some really great things in your life. So this becomes very powerful with this Venus influence. With Uranus in there, again, a lot of unexpected snap thoughts and decisions that can come through at this time. Great time to pull on your inspiration. Great time to pull out these different unusual ideas that you can use and put towards your vision. But take the time to think it through first. Take the time to write it down, to journal it, to talk it through with a partner at this time. This can help you tremendously. Let's go ahead and shift forward here to the fixed signs. So if you have a Taurus moon or Taurus ascendant, then this is going to be Mercury transiting through your 12th house. So for those of you with a Taurus moon, Taurus ascendant, this is a time of going inward. And so this is actually a little bit of a different transit for those of you with a Taurus moon, Taurus ascendant, where you may not necessarily be acting impulsively in your day-to-day -day life. This impulsivity comes within the mind where there is a lot of internal conflict that can come up here. And so you want to pay attention to your thoughts, pay attention to your feelings, any subconscious issues that need to be cleared out is highly important at this time, especially with your chart ruler back in your 12th house. You are clearing so much that doesn't serve you. And so this is important to pay very close attention to this. And with Venus controlling your sixth house as well, a lot of these conflicts or problems that you can release here internally. So this is a huge time to reflect internally and look at these areas that can help you to clear out the things that no longer serve you. The sun is back here. So some of you may feel very passionate towards adventure, towards discovering new things, going on foreign trips. All of these things can come into mind. And with Mercury here, it's important that you're planning everything out properly. 
this Mercury and Aries transit, you can impulsively plan a trip or a journey, or you can impulsively think about these things that you want to do in life that are not healthy, that are not beneficial. And with Venus back in this 12th house, you can impulsively find yourself eating or drinking or doing anything along these lines that is an addictive habit. You want to be careful in this area as, again, Venus is controlling your sixth house. So you can find yourself impulsively getting into these situations where you are indulging, where you're taking in all of these things that don't serve your highest, greatest good. This is a huge time for Taurus, Moon Taurus Ascendant, to clear out the things that no longer serve you. For those of you with a Leo Moon, Leo Ascendant, Mercury will be shifting into your ninth house. This is an interesting transit as Mercury is controlling your 11th house and your second house. Mercury is a bit of a tricky planet for those of you with a Leo Moon, Leo Ascendant. It's here in your ninth house where you can find yourself gaining a lot of great wisdom and insight. Remember that we said in the beginning of this that Aries is a very intuitive sign. It's about perception. And so this is a time where you can gain some clarity in some areas here in your life. You want to be careful, though, again, similar to Taurus, about these snap decisions about traveling or moving or going to foreign places or thinking about moving to foreign places. You want to really think everything through correctly. And as this is in your ninth house, some counsel, some wisdom, talking this through with others can tremendously help you find the clarity that you need at this time. With Venus also here, as Venus controls your third house and your 10th house, this is a great time for career. This is a great time for leveling up, moving up the ranks as this is your ruler of your career and of this third house of communication, which remember is a house that grows with time. And so this energy here is great for growing, for moving up, for leveling up, for advancing in a huge way in your career, in your projects, in your school, whatever the case may be, you can be leveling up in your achievements. But you want to be careful, again, of this impulsiveness. There can be an impulsiveness to try to get to the top, to try to get to the highest position right away on a snap decision. So you want to find the balance to slow this down. But especially as the sun is your chart ruler and it will be here with Mercury and Venus in its exaltation, this is a huge time where you can level up. This is a huge time where you can find yourself in leadership positions, where you can find yourself moving up the ranks with this energy. For those of you with a Scorpio moon or Scorpio ascendant, Mercury will be transiting through your sixth house. This is dangerous. You want to be careful about getting into reckless decisions, especially as Mercury is controlling your eighth house and sitting here in your sixth house. These are both houses of conflict. And especially as that eighth house where Mercury rules is a house of sudden events, you want to be careful of these quick snap decisions where you're reacting to a situation. If you find yourself in a difficulty or you find yourself in a situation where you feel backed into a corner, it's important to think it through before trying to jump into a decision that you believe will solve the problem. Thinking everything through will give you a better outcome of how to come to a solution. Anything where you are quickly acting is going to land you in trouble with the rulership of the 8th house. Also, Mercury is controlling your 11th house, and so this is a huge time where you can receive gains for your efforts. But it's also a time where you can lose those gains very quickly. Again, that 8th house can land you into some trouble. So you want to stay disciplined in everything that you're doing with this changeable energy of Mercury transiting through your 6th house you can easily fall off track and your gains can be lost due to this. So you want to be 
careful of how you are taking your action steps. This is a huge time, again, where you can level up, where you can gain a lot because the sun is the ruler of your 10th house. You can reach a high position in your status, in your career, in your reputation. How others see you can very much be king-like during this time. Others seeing your potential, seeing your craft, seeing your ability, where you get to shine for your work, for your efforts. But again, you want to be careful. The sun is a hot planet and it sits here in this sixth house of conflicts. So you can get into power struggles. You can get into difficulties around authority. You want to be very careful about this quick decision making of trying to regain control of the situation or trying to get out of a situation where you feel pinned down. This can negatively affect you by quickly jumping into these reactions. Venus is controlling your 12th house and your 7th house. So this is a great time for business partnerships, for relationships to prosper. You can really take charge in this area. You want to be careful, though, because you can also exhaust your energy through this. And you can wind up becoming very lazy or disappearing as Venus is controlling your 12th house of escape. And so this is an area where you want to use up your energy wisely during this time. This Venus and Aries energy can be very impulsive and you can quickly try to jump into things, especially regarding business as Venus is controlling your seventh house. So you want to be very careful about how you are approaching these tasks and responsibilities that you're super excited to accomplish. Anything where you are charging in too quickly can expend your energy, which can lead to a withdrawal. For those of you with an Aquarius moon or Aquarius ascendant, Mercury is transiting through your third house. So this becomes a huge time of your communication. Mercury originally rules this third house. It's very comfortable here, but it's not so comfortable in the sign of Aries where you can get yourself into trouble due to your communication. And so you want to be careful here with this energy as those of you who are trying to do social justice things, who are trying to call others out for justice, all of these things can land you into some trouble depending on how aggressive this message is. Again, this Mercury and Aries energy is very troublesome. That original message that came through is who's being naughty, who's getting into trouble during this transit. And so this can definitely be you if you are not using this energy wisely. Anything involving communication, publishing, getting the message out as this is in the third house, aspecting your ninth house you want to be very careful with. This can land you into some tremendous trouble at this time. Mercury controls your fifth house and it controls your eighth house. And so this is a huge time once again, of trouble that you can land yourself into. You want to be careful about expressing yourself because you can wind up into a situation of some sort of crisis or difficulty where you could actually find yourself in some major trouble. This is time to use your logic, use your decisions wisely. The sun controlling your seventh house, again, that seventh house being about partnerships, you can get into some power play with others. You can get into some issues with authority. The sun is not a friendly sign for those of you with an Aquarius ascendant, and it is exalted here in this seventh house. You want to be careful with this energy. So Venus is also going to be transiting through Aries as well. Venus is a very positive planet for those of you with an Aquarius moon or Aquarius ascendant as it controls your ninth house. And so this can give you some very good results in terms of your studies at this time. Anything that you are planning on learning, that you are planning on discovering at this time can go very well. 
again, this might not be the best time to write about your discoveries if the message is going to come across as aggressive. This can land you into some difficulties and problems that are unnecessary. So you can spend a lot of this transit just learning, gathering information, and it might be better to express this as Mercury shifts into the sign of Taurus. Let's go ahead and shift forward here into the mutable signs. So for those of you with a Gemini moon or Gemini ascendant, Mercury, your ruler, is going to be transiting through your 11th house of gains. This is very auspicious. And this is a time where you can gain a lot through your influence on others. This is a time where you can take the lead. You can express yourself in a huge way that commands the attention of others. Through this, you can gain a lot of support, a lot of wealth, a lot of gains that can take you to a very high position, that can give you a lot of high recognition. But you want to be careful, again, because Mercury isn't so happy here in the sign of Aries, you can land yourself into debates and disputes with others. You can even land yourself into some difficulty where you say things that lead to some sort of shunning or outcast. So you want to be careful about expressing this energy as it can land you into some great trouble in your life. But this can also bring you some great results if you're using this wisely. This aspects over to your fifth house of your projects, your interests, your creativity. So any projects that you're working towards, you can easily gain the support of others through your communication. The sun, also controlling your third house of communication, being here as well, increasing this even more so where your leadership, your influence on others can have a huge impact. You can shine during this time and receive a lot of recognition around the things that you want to create and build. Your communication skills are making a powerful effect during this transit. Venus is a friend to your ruler. Mercury will also be in this transit as well. Venus is controlling your fifth house along with your 12th house. This is great. You have so much inspiration, so much creative ideas that you can pour into the things that you want. Again, your expression, your communication, your creativity is huge. You can make a huge impact on others. And Venus in the 11th house, giving you a lot of popularity, a lot of attraction, a lot of attention from others. So your career can prosper, your projects, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, your desires can prosper due to the attention that you're gaining during this transit. You want to be careful, though, again, about being overly harsh or commanding. You could find yourself getting the opposite results where you're being shunned or you are being cast out for this, especially with Mars that is transiting through your first house. You're very aggressive. You're very direct during this transit. For those of you with a Virgo moon, Virgo ascendant, Mercury is going to be shifting into your sixth house of, I'm sorry, your eighth house of sudden events. And so this is an area where you can see some sudden fluctuations happening, quick ups and downs. Don't let this discourage you. Mercury is your chart ruler and it controls your 10th house of career. This can only give you good results. But as you're seeing these ups and downs, keep in mind that this will subside. And so any area where you are seeing loss, you're going to get it back. You're going to see this short up and down fluctuation happening here with Mercury. Mercury in the eighth is also giving you the ability to tap into some deeper knowledge, some deeper insight. So anything that you're doing at this time, great investigation power to look deeper into the things that you want to accomplish. This gives you the ability to look at all the details, to look at all the fine print, to make sure that you have everything in check. This is going to help your career and your image in a big way during this time. This is also a time where Mercury in the 8th can really bring up some things that have been hidden for a long time that need to be faced and addressed. And so your conflict, your problem-solving, your managing abilities 
come into great use during this transit. The sun, which controls your 12th house, will also be here with Mercury. This is, again, a time where anything that has not been addressed, finding that closure, finding that peace, as this 12th house is a house of endings. With Venus also transiting through this 8th house, Venus is a little bit of a tricky planet for those of you with a Virgo moon, Virgo ascendant, as Venus controls your 2nd and 11th house. I'm sorry, your 2nd and your 11th house. So this is a huge time. Your second and your ninth house. There we go. Let's try this again. So as Venus is controlling your second and your ninth house, this is a huge time of using your wisdom, using your skills, using your craft, and actually speaking this, communicating it making your opinion known, this can actually teach and inspire others in a huge way. And this can bring you a lot of success. Again, those of you who are doing anything along the lines of communication, writing, this is a time where you can really look into the deeper knowledge and see the fine print, see the hidden details, and use this to your advantage in your career. For those of you with a Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius ascendant, Mercury is going to transit through your fifth house. And so this is a time where a lot of you are going to want to have a lot of fun to do spontaneous outings. You might have some spontaneous inspiration to work on a new project, to perfect a new skill or craft at this time. So this is a very playful transit for those of you with a Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius ascendant. Mercury is controlling your 10th house along with your 7th house. And so this is a time where communication is huge. All of these things that you're super excited to work on, to do, you can do all of this with other people and they will love this. So this is a very social and playful time for those of you with the Sagittarius moon, Sagittarius ascendant. And this can even affect your career in a big way, coming up with these different ideas, these different thoughts that can help in your work field is highly important. And many of you with Virgo controlling that 10th house are working in fields that require your intellect, your practical skills. And so as Mercury is in here, here in this sign of Aries, this gives you quick ideas, quick inspiration where you can quickly solve problems, quickly come up with ideas. And this can strongly benefit you at this time. Venus will also be here with the sign of Mercury. Venus is another challenging planet for those of you with a Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius ascendant as it controls your 11th house and your 6th house. And so this is an area where you can see some obstacles or difficulties. Anything that you're working on, remember that this is going to grow with time because the sixth house and the 11th house are Opachaya houses. They grow over time. And so this is a time of continuing to put your efforts towards whatever it is that you'd like to create, to work on. Your creative skills are strongly being impacted with Mercury and Venus being here in the fifth house, but this will require time and effort. You're not going to see quick results. And this is something to keep in mind with this Aries, Aries energy activating your fifth house. There's so much of this impulsivity, this quickness, this speed to try to get to an outcome. It's not going to happen like this for those of you with the Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius ascendant. Take your time, stay dedicated, Stay focused on the task at hand. The sun will also be here, and the sun is a very beneficial planet as it controls your ninth house. This is a time where your knowledge, your wisdom, your skills can be put to good use. Again, you can see your intellect increase in a huge way during this time where all of this energy, this excitement, giving you quick, spontaneous burst of insight where you can make a great teacher, a great influencer at this time with all of this Aries energy. 
For those of you with a Pisces moon or Pisces ascendant, Mercury will transit through your first house. And so this is a time, I'm sorry, through your second house. So this is a time of your communication skills being very strong. This is Mercury coming into the second house of speech. So many of you may find yourselves much more talkative coming into this transit, wanting to talk with your family a lot, wanting to talk on your beliefs, on your values. This can come through very strongly. Mercury is going to aspect over to your eighth house. And so you want to be careful here because anything that you can say during this transit can land you into some difficulty, especially as Mercury is controlling your seventh house and your fourth house, you can get into some difficulties along the lines of family and relationships. This can even affect your work, your business partnerships, any sort of partnership or relation that you have at this time. Your communication can impact this in a big way, but you have this ability now to speak in a very direct way that really transforms and impacts others as it aspects over to this eighth house where many of you are trying to bring about balance by transforming and healing those around you. And so your communication can make an impact in a huge way in helping others at this time. You want to be careful though, as again, this communication style of Mercury and Aries can land you into some problems during this time. Venus will also be here, and Venus controls your eighth house along with your third house. Again, communication, huge. This can land you into some difficulties with all of this impulsive energy. Also very bold, very direct. You can make a great impact on others positively, but make sure you're thinking everything through correctly because you can say things that can cut others during this time and bring you into a place of difficulty, especially with the sun that controls your sixth house. The sun is a very damaging planet for those of you with a Pisces moon, Pisces ascendant, as the ego is being destroyed for the Pisces moon, Pisces ascendant. So you want to be careful of ego issues. If you are in a space of not being fully confident in yourself and needing to impulsively do things, impulsively communicate things, this can land you into a situation where your ego is challenged. And this can put you in a situation where you run into conflicts with authority, run into conflicts with those in positions of power. And so this becomes a very difficult transit for those of you with a Pisces moon, Pisces ascendant. Watch your communication. Watch how your communication impacts other people at this time. It is going to be huge. So this has been your transit of Mercury and Aries, a short little brief transit of this Mercury activity that's very impulsive here in Aries from April 16th through April 30th. So very brief period. Again, anything that you want to accomplish best to think it through and hold it off for a little bit because this transit is short and brief. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like as well as a comment. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell. And if you have not checked out that video on Mars and Gemini, make sure to check it out. It's a huge part of this Mercury and Aries transit where we are having all of this impulsive energy throughout the month of April, especially here in the second half. And so this is a time where you want to be careful about snap decisions, about jumping into things with all of this energy that is heated up here in the month of April. We have more things to talk about as we come closer to the end of April. If you have any additional thoughts or questions Anything you'd like me to bring up in a future video, leave it down below in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about Vedic Astrology, there is a course available in the Facebook group, Astrology Lessons with Daquan Jones. The information for all of that is down below 
in the description along with the comments. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you in the next video.